In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. We're getting close to the end of Christmas time. My, my friend, uh, Deacon Joe Schmidt, uh, commented in his homily this weekend that uh, although we got the, the full uh, complement of days of Advent, uh, it means that Christmas is over in just two weeks. <laughs> Where did it go? Um, this feast of Epiphany is, uh, it's about the revelation of God. Um, and the revelation continues to happen. It's always our hope that when we get together to celebrate the Eucharist, Christ will reveal himself to us again, perhaps in a new way. This morning, let us acknowledge that we need the light of Christ and that um, there is no substitute for him. Acknowledging our sometimes uh, unwillingness or inability to turn to him when we need him. Let us pray. O oh God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see, your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. Wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer homage. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage, all nations shall serve him. For every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when they cry, and the afflicted when they have no one to help them. He shall have pity for the lowly, the lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It has not been made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, <coughs> are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the, ma the Magi secretly and ascertained from them, from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem say, and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, Bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. 
After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their, their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. So today we celebrate the feast of Epiphany. And what does it mean? Epiphany. Epiphany is uh, is from the Greek epiphania, which means to manifest, to make known or to reveal. And you remember uh, at Christmas the event happened in that city there, the city of Bethlehem. And when the baby was born, he made himself known to the people of Israel around that town, that city. And of course to Mary, to, the, uh, to Joseph, and to the shepherds. And also to, to the, uh, the, the chief priests and the people around them. But now today, the Lord is making himself known to the entire world. And that is represented by the three wise men. And I'm not very sure whether you have paid a close attention and looked at how these wise men look like. Now let me lift this guy up. <laughs> how does he look like? What color is he? White. He seems Caucasian. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Then we have this, uh, this other guy who is, who is down here. How does he look like? Brown. What color is that? Brown. It's brown, right? Correct. Then we have this, uh, this other guy here. What color is he? He's from Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> so I think those, those three colors represent the, the entire, uh, the races in the world. Is there any other color? White, brown, and, and black. Any other color? Yeah. Yeah. Do we have yellow? Not really. I think uh, the three, they represent all uh, the humanity. So Christ is manifesting himself to the entire world, represented by all these people from the far east, <coughs> from far and wide. And uh, you remember during Christmas time, these guys were, we, we placed them at the corner there. <laughs> and they have been making their, their long journey. Last week they were here. <laughs> and today you see they are there. So they made a long journey uh, to, uh, to go and give the, pay homage uh, to, the, to the king. Now this Feast of Epiphany now celebrates 
the revelation of Jesus, the Son of God, to the entire universe. The, the Magi uh, represent all the people, including ourselves, who have found their way to Christ. And they, they make that journey to Christ. They also represent those who have found him or found in him the meaning of their lives and the light which guides them. What were the names of this, those three guys there? <laughs> M, B, C. I, I give you the clue. Melchior. B, what is B? Good. And what about C? Casper. Good. So the three wise men, they were receptive of the sign. When they were very far, they could see the star, which you can see up there. And that star meant something very special. So they also had the option of doing nothing and just remaining where they are. But they were receptive of the sign and they began their long journey in search of the newborn uh, king. So they had to leave their comfort zone and make that journey. And once they arrived there, they, what they found, maybe, they, maybe it's not what they expected. They, they may have expected the king in a palace, but they found the king in a manger. But still, they paid homage, prostrated, and uh, gave their gifts. They were led by a star. <clears throat> Is a star created or uncreated? Is a created being, right? So they were led by a star which is created. Now we can ask ourselves, we also have things in our lives. Are we led to or distracted from Jesus by the things we have or we see? <clears throat> they were also very honest uh, people seeking to see the newborn king. So they fall under, under the category of people who walked in darkness but saw the light. I would like us to remember three things if you forget everything else today. <laughs> so number one, the three kings were very genuine in their worship. So they offered genuine worship to Christ unlike the false proposal by King Herod. I don't think King Herod meant, uh, was, meant what he said. When you discover, come and tell me, then I'll go and pay homage. So they were genuine in their worship and seeking of Christ. And they had to leave their comfort zones. So are we also genuine in our worship? Number two, the three kings, when they arrived there, they opened their treasures and offered gifts. What were the gifts? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. <clears throat> we can also add uh, a fourth one. After they offered their gifts, what did they do? <coughs> what did they do? Yeah, they worshipped him. Also another gift is witness of their actions. Now, we must be ready also to offer something to Jesus. We can ask ourselves, what will I offer to the Lord for his goodness to me?
What is that gift which you offer to the Lord for his goodness to you? Yeah. <clears throat> I know there's a song in Swahili which we sing about what shall I offer to the Lord to make him happy or to please him. Then the, the song asks, I may give him money, but he may not like, he may not, yeah, I may give him clothes, but uh, that's not the best. I may give him shoes. Then it asks and says, uh, the Lord wants a, a humble heart, a patient, he wants our entire being. So what the best gift we can give to our Lord, one of them, one of them is ourselves, oneself. <clears throat> our loving or our love also, our loving heart, our patient heart, our caring hearts. Uh, very soon, uh, once we reach at the preface, Father Mike will say, the Lord be with you. And what do you respond? And also with you. Then he will say, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. That one there. That is your being, what you are offering <clears throat> to the Lord. So we must be ready also to make that offering to our Lord. Then number three, after, uh, after the kings had, had done, paid their homage, prayed and worshipped, they got some revelation in a dream, not to go back by way of herald. And they went on a different path. So we must not allow ourselves to be deceived or distracted by the many heralds in this world. So we have to keep following the star. So those three wise men, after encountering the king, they changed their path. It is also what happens once we recognize the sign we have so many signs in our lives leading us to, to Christ. And then we make that journey, that long journey. We, we offer our gifts. And then we will not remain the same. We'll go back home in a new, uh, on a new path. So where are, where are we on our journey towards the Lord? So the Lord is revealing uh, himself to us and is giving us the invitation. <clears throat> Are we willing to act on that invitation? And that happens all, all the time when we come to Mass, like even today. We are here. We have come. We have made the journey. We are here. And very soon, we are going to receive him. We are going to receive his body and blood. Then we will not go back home the way we came. So it gives us a new path. So we go back on uh, in a new path, rejoicing. So may we be open to read the sign, to get out of the comfort zone, make that journey, offer our gift to the Lord, and be ready to take on a new path. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.